Hi everyone, my name is Sean Bosilitz. And I'm Yuri Pavlotsky. And today we're going to talk about the future of video ads with the IMA SDK. So for those of you not familiar with the IMA SDK, it's an SDK we distribute to monetize video content on websites and in apps. It works with DFP, AdSense, or any other VAST compliant ad server. Uh, VAST stands for Video Ad Serving Template, that's the industry standard for video ads. And it's used to put TV commercial style ad breaks in your content. So if you have, say, a TV show where you want to put uh, an ad at 10 minutes and another ad at 20 minutes, you can use DFP and the IMA SDK to make that nice and easy. So we're going to talk about the future, but before we can talk about the future, we have to talk about where we are now. Uh, with the IMA SDK as it is today, there are two main implementation styles. There's a two-player solution and the single-player solution. In the two-player solution, you have a content video player that's playing your content, and the IMA SDK creates an ad player, which is a separate video player, on top of the content pl player to play the ads. Uh, in a single player solution, there's just one video player that's used by both the content and the ads. Uh, and there are different reasons that we have to use these in different places, uh, and I'll get into that a bit now. So the two player solution we use as widely as we can, but there are some places that don't support two simultaneous video players. So in those places we need to use a single player. Uh, the two player solution has little to no support on set top box platforms like Chromecast, Roku, or Apple TV. So for those platforms, we need to use a single video player. It's also got higher resource consumption than a single player because you're starting up two video players, you're buffering two videos at the same time. It's just using more resources than if you were only using one video player. The single player solution uh, has some caveats in that there are platform differences in how you can switch between content and ads. Uh, so for example, on some platforms, if you're switching from one video to another in one video player, you need to call load and then wait for a loaded metadata event before you can actually do anything. In other platforms, you could just start playing the video right away and it'll work. Uh, it leads to a lot of branching in your code, which makes your code more complicated, and more complicated code is likely to be more buggy. You also end up with a shared buffer for content and ads with a single player, uh, which leads to you losing your buffer when you stop playing content in order to play an ad. I'll give you a little demonstration of what that means. So suppose somebody's watching Big Buck Bunny in your app. Uh, Big Buck Bunny is a Creative Commons video that we like to use for our samples. Uh, let's say you have a mid-roll halfway through the video. So the user's watching the video, and maybe they've got a really fast connection, so they've already buffered the entire video by the time they get to the midpoint. Uh, when they get to that midpoint, it's time to play an ad, and we need to put the ad in the content player that's currently playing Big Buck Bunny. So we take Big Buck Bunny out of the player, and the user has just lost all of the buffer that they had for the rest of the video. Now they see a buffering spinner while we load up the ad, and eventually the ad is ready to play, and we show them the ad. When the ad plays to completion, we need to go back to content, so now they see another buffering spinner while we're waiting for the content to resume, and then eventually the content buffers to a point that we can play it again, and they see the content in the player. Obviously, this is not an ideal solution. So just to summarize the problems with the two different existing implementations, for two-player, it's not as widely supported, and they have higher resource consumption than a single video player. For single player, there's platform differences in how you're allowed to swap between videos and a single video player, and you also lose your buffer every time you switch between one video to get to another one. And overall, there's just too much to consider between different platforms. Uh, if, for example, you're using our HTML5 SDK today, you probably have a number of distinct code paths through your implementation to handle two-player solution, a single player, a single player on iPhone versus a single player on some kind of set-top box, there's just too much going on, and it's too complicated to be uh, easily maintainable code. So how can we make this better? In order to talk about how we can make this better, we have to get to the real root of the problem. Um, and the root of the problem is that we're taking these two separate systems and trying to marry them together. You have your content player, which is reaching out to the content CDN, and the IMA SDK reaching out to the ad server, and they're trying to take two different pieces of video and sort of make them play nice together. Uh, and it's not always easy to do. So in order to make this better, we want to take these two separate systems and sort of combine them somehow into one system. And we're doing that with something new that we're calling dynamic ad insertion. With dynamic ad insertion, we take another server and put that in between the content CDN and the ad server and your app or your web page. So the, we are calling the dynamic ad insertion, we're calling it DAI for short. So DAI, when it's time for you to play a video, is going to reach out to the content CDN and reach out to the ad server and take your content video and your ad video and merge them together to create one seamless video stream that gets sent down to your app. The IMA SDK will wrap your content player, so there's less work for you to do. The IMA SDK can automatically take this video stream and insert it into your content player. You have one constant stream of video coming down to your app with both ads and content. 
So to go back to our earlier example, um, if you have a dynamic ad insertion with this inline ad in Big Buck Bunny, the user is watching Big Buck Bunny, they get to a point before the mid-roll, and because the mid-roll is in the same content stream, it's already buffering the mid-roll. So it's time to play the mid-roll, and the mid-roll just plays. And then the mid-roll plays to completion. While the mid-roll is playing, it's buffering the rest of the content, and the mid-roll finishes, and we go straight back to content. No buffering. So how do we set this up? There's a server component, and then there's going to be an application component. So on the server side, you're going to set up ads in DFP just like you do today, and get an ad tag just like you do today. You'll set up your live stream or your content on your CDN just like you do today and get a URL to that. And then you're going to go to the dynamic ad insertion front end and register your live stream and the ad tag URL with the streaming server. And that's going to give you an asset key. And the asset key is your new link to your stream. So to give you a visual representation of this, this is the, the live stream front end as it exists today. So you're going to give it an event name just so you can identify it later. You'll have the master ad tag that you got from DFP. Uh, the content stream that you got from your CDN. Uh, you're going to provide a slate, and a slate is a video that will play in the stream if you have ads that don't quite fill an ad break. So if you've ever watched, for example, uh, streaming content on a network site, and when the ads are done, you get a little network logo and it says, we'll be right back, and then eventually your content resumes, that is the slate. Uh, because we're doing a live stream example here, we're going to have a start time and an end time. And then you have an optional authentication service that would provide an additional key on top of your asset key that would make sure that nobody but you can actually access the stream. So now that we've gone over the server side, I'm going to hand it over to Yuri, and he's going to talk about how to do this in code. Thanks, Sean. So my name is Yuri, and let's get into the code. Um, so here we're going to talk on a high level how to set up your app with the IMA SDK DAI. So first you're going to set up a player in your IMA app and instead of providing an ad tag like you would in our client side implementation for, DF, uh, for DAI, you're going to provide the asset key that Sean mentioned earlier. Also, IMA is actually going to reach out to the DFP DAI to initiate the stream and it's going to return a unified stream of both content and ads that are going to be played in your content player. So the strengths of this are that you have one approach for many platforms. So all those disparate platforms that either require the one player or two player approach from the client side IMA implementation are actually going to use the same approach when using DAI. So let's get into the meat of the code. Um, if you are familiar with our IMA client side implementation, you're actually going to feel right at home with this DAI implementation. It's very similar, and as a matter of fact, it reuses much of the same classes, many of the same classes. So, uh, IMA adds loader is actually going to be used in your DAI implementation as well. You're going to allocate it and pass in any IMA SDK settings that you want. Here we just allocate it with the default uh, initializer and we're not passing in any uh, settings here. Uh, one note, this is iOS code. The Android code for DAI is very similar and actually is uh, more streamlined than the client-side implementation as well. So um, here we're going to continue with our DAI implementation for iOS and we're going to create the ad display container in which to display our ads. The uh, ad display container is again the same approach that you would take when you're working with the client side. We're going to make the same exact calls to allocate and initialize the ad display container here for DAI. So you're going to pass in your UI view and any companion ad slots that you would pass in here. Again, we are not passing in any ad slots, just uh, uh, companion slots, excuse me. Continuing, we're going to need a video display uh, to dis uh, display our video. And here for iOS, we're going to use the AV player video display. We take advantage of iOS's built-in AV player. We're going to allocate it and pass along this uh, AV player that we have, our, uh, a reference to our content playing AV player. And that's, again, exactly the same as you would do in the client-side implementation. So here we're actually going to get into some uh, new territory where we're going to use a different class that's uh, the analog of ad request for DAI, which is called the stream request class. 
you can see it over here on the top as IMA stream request. So normally you would create an ad IMA ad request and create it with the ad tag. Here we're actually going to pass in the asset key that we mentioned earlier and also the ad display container and video display that we created in the previous slides. So again, this is very similar to your uh, ad request flow, except here we have our stream request class instead. And normally you would then call the ads loader to load an ad request. Here we have a new method for the ad loader, which is the request stream with request method. This is the analog of requesting ads for DAI streams. Afterwards, assuming everything goes well and you're going to get back your ads that are loaded with data, you're going to get this ads loaded with data call on your ads loader delegate. And instead of getting your ads manager back here, we have the ads manager analog for streams called IMA Stream Manager. That's a new class for dealing with DAI streams and managing their uh, playback and such. So you're going to get that back from the ads loaded data um, object. Uh, you're going to get back the dot stream manager from that and then you're going to initialize your stream manager with uh, your ad rendering settings. Here we're not passing in any extra ad rendering settings but again these are the same ad rendering settings that you use for client side implementation. You can uh, use all the same settings here as well. So to summarize on the left, we have all of our usual suspects on the client side implementation, ads loader, ad display container, and etc. And on the right, we have the DAI implementation. So again, we're reusing ads loader, reusing ad display container, and AV player video display. But instead of using our ads request class, we have a new stream request for DAI. And again, instead of reusing the ads manager, we are actually using a new stream manager in order to manage our DAI streams. So that's great. But now let's see a demo of how this actually works in a real working iOS app. So here we have our stream that's playing both content and ads. It is playing a set of three DFP sample linear inline ads, and then it's going to play the video Big Buck Bunny, which is a Creative Commons video that we use for these examples. Right now it's playing the second of the three ads in the pod, and then it's going to switch to the content video that's Big Buck Bunny. But the content video and the ads are actually all part of one seamless stream, so it's already buffered the content video when it was on the ads. So as you saw, it seamlessly transitioned from the ads to the content video itself. In the same way, right now it's buffering both the content and the ads as one stream, so it's going to switch back from the content video back to the ads in one seamless tr transition. I should note that this is a simulated live stream, so you see the video has looped and is starting in the beginning of the movie again, and that's because this is not a real live stream, it's actually just a looped section of Big Buck Bunny that's looped over it again. So now we're back to our pod of three DFP ads, again these are just small sample ads each 10 seconds long, and they play every 15 seconds into the stream. And again, since this is a simulated live stream, it doesn't necessarily start at the beginning of the movie. It just starts at a, whatever point you would enter and begin watching the stream. So now you see it's gone back to the content video, Big Buck Bunny, seamlessly from the ads in the same way that it transitioned from the content video to the ads. And that's dynamic ad insertion.